Hi friends, Nick here from Technology Lowdown. Today we're talking about a Netgear 8 port gigabit managed switch. Now this switch uh, is a GS908E100 AUS. I will show you some images of it here. So this is it here. Um, I purchased this switch probably about uh, three months ago um, because I needed uh, some more managed switching capability within the home network here. And um, I thought it was just for in my home office area. And I thought I would give this one a go. I didn't really need any robust features on it. I just needed some managed ports and the ability to be able to uh, uh, pull up a VLAN if I needed one. Um, so this is the switch I went with. The main reason was because I was on a budget and I just wanted to get something that would probably do the job. And to the most part, look, it does do the job. It supports link aggregation. It will um, enable you to assign VLANs, trunks to the ports, all that you would expect a managed switch of this capability to do. It doesn't have port security, but um, it has the basics of what you would expect a managed switch to be able to do, including features such as QoS uh, lag, which is that link aggregation, IGMP, and uh, visibility uh, security. And uh, you can just uh, get a bit of an overview of the device. Uh, in fact, we might just uh, log into it a little bit here. Um, just so you can see what it looks like. Oh, that's not it there. Uh, so it's not a secure login. Um, let's bring it up. So it's a Netgear. So if you've ever used some of Netgear's consumer products before, um, quite often they don't actually use a username. It's just a password only. So I'll just log in here. All right, so here's the homepage when you first log in. You can see that I've got this one is up. It's got flow controllers off. So it has all that you would expect to see there. You can turn things on or off as needed. Manually change the speed. Um, if we scroll down a bit more here, what else have we got? Um, same options, assign a port name. If we go to switching, this is where you configure your uh, VLANs and trunking. Uh, this this is QoS, this page specifically. Uh, we've got VLAN as well. Um, now, by default, it comes with no VLANs, so you need to kind of activate uh, 802.1Q based VLANs. And then once you do that, then you can uh, start playing around with your VLANs. Um, there's also this multicast option here. Um, I've just left that as default. We've got link aggregation. Um, so you can select ports for link ag1, only one to four ports can be a part of the link aggregated group. So all of these four ports could be a part of a link ag group if you needed it to be. So going back to monitoring here, uh, we've got a cable test, um, which I won't do at the moment, but you can uh, determine if there's a fault with the cable. So that's good. That's a feature which uh, quite often isn't with a lower end network switch. Uh, we've got loop prevention, so it will block the traffic if you're creating a loop with a network cable somewhere. Port statistics. Now, for a Netgear product, I would have thought that it would have had, you know, some more fancier graphs. But pretty much here is just all the bits, so you've got to convert the bits uh, to bytes if you want to actually make sense of what it is. Um, so there we are. Uh, whoop. All right, so it's transferred a fair bit. Might go make a megabyte. Uh, oh, megabit. Um, there you go. But there we are, 155. Now, from when I've been monitoring it, it seems to reset this kind of every oh, half an hour or an hour. Or, um, yeah, it, it's not a very long history of the port. Um, under advanced settings here, we've got the preset modes, configuration files. You can download your export. That's a nice feature. Power saving. Um, yeah, I wouldn't know why you would want to use power saving. But that is there. LEDs, you can turn it on and off. It's a bit of a gimmick, really. Um, switch discovery. Let's say that it can be discovered by, say, the Netgear app. Um, firmware. I did update the firmware when I got it, and there's been no new versions for it since either. Access control. So you can control who can access the switch. That's all right. Default settings. Restore to default. Change password and, yeah, register the product. So really, there's not much of the switch. But my main downfall with the switch is 
the actual um, qu quality of it, it's, you know, it's plastic, which is to be expected. But just the design flaw is um, it's just terrible, I thought. So here you can see you've got this little plastic cover that kind of opens and closes and it kind of hides the cable. So good in theory, but in practice, it's pretty bad. So if you have a look here, there's these uh, small little holes that you can uh, stick uh, the network cable through from the port. But if you've got any sort of decent network cable, say a Cat6 um, cable, when you've got that one plugged in, that cable is going to be kinked in there and will most likely over time it will deteriorate and it will um, uh, have shorts in that wire. So what I actually ended up doing, and you can see here, um, this is it here, I've actually broken off every single one of those tabs because I got so annoyed of those tabs because they just didn't serve their purpose. Um, and it was going to destroy the cables that I had. So if you have a look here, I've got a uh, Molex uh, Cat 5E cable there, and it it fits in there now, but before when those tabs were there, if I had closed that cover on there and pushed it down, it would have kinked these cables and perhaps introduced inconsistencies into the network through cable faults. Uh, one feature which uh, you couldn't really see in the GUI there was that there is actually USBs in this one, which is neat. Say if you've got it on your desk and you want to plug something in there to charge or power something, that is there as an option. But again, it's a network switch. I don't primarily use it for that. And I don't know why you would. Um, so bottom line is, if you're thinking about getting the switch and all you need it for is just a few basic things, it'll be fine. But you'll probably find that you will need to break off those tabs if you want to actually plug in a half decent network cable in there. I think you would be better off buying a managed switch, say, such as the ProSafe line, which is what I was going to get. And I've used a couple of these ProSafe line switches before, and I have not had a fault with them. And, um, yeah, look, they are a great device. They support all the same features that uh, this one would here anyway. Um, you've also got, like, uh, some TP-Link switches as well that you can get managed eight port and look they're all a very uh similar price range so this is another one it's an extra seven dollars so i perhaps could have got this one but um yeah the netgear one is what i went with because i have used the netgear pro safe line so i thought i might just drop down to the level just below the pro safe to see how it goes and look it's performed flawlessly so far but if you actually want something which is uh you're not going to have to break those tabs off then look i'll just say just buy a regular eight port switch and not some sort of fancy one uh, like that uh, cheap 53 dollar one uh, from netgear well thanks for watching this video i just wanted to share that little bit of a rant on that product because you know there wasn't really much information that i could find on it online on youtube or uh, when i did some google searches for it but really i just cannot stand it and it it's not really that neat and tidy to me just because uh, i had to end up breaking those parts off which allowed me to make it neat and tidy i suppose but uh where it is actually installed within my network it doesn't need to be uh, neat and tidy because usually my network gear is out of sight out of mind and it just looks after itself well, thanks for watching this video. If you would like to see more videos like this, subscribe and don't forget to tap the bell if you would like to receive notifications. Thanks for watching. Bye.